I am Daniel Lucas, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years. Today, I have my special guest. He is the founder and CEO of the Passion MBA, a total coaching company, and of course, an author to no other than Mr. Mustafa Moir. Welcome to Book 101, Mr. Mustafa. Thank you so much, Mr. Daniel. Really appreciate uh, the opportunity. Thank you. Yes, and can you please introduce yourself? As as you rightly say, it, um, I, I have a few things I'm working on right now. I'm I'm a career coach. I'm also an author of the Passion MBA, uh, the Time to Move On book. Uh, previously, I lived a few career lives, very different in perspective and in nature. I started my first career as a pharmacist. Uh, once I graduated, I decided pharmacy wasn't for me. So I decided to move on to a new career. Um, that was diplomacy. Uh, so I had a bit of uh, time, uh, almost three years, three years and a half while working as a pharmacist, preparing myself to be a diplomat. In diplomacy, um, my life changed. So I work in, in different countries. I work in Africa, in Malawi, um, in New York, in the United Nations, and also uh, in China. Um, somehow in China, uh, after five years at the embassy there, I reached the peak of my career and I decided to move on again. And uh, this is how I ended up in investment banking. So uh, I work in a multinational development bank uh, uh, very similar to the world bank it's, it's called the, the asian infrastructure investment bank um i was uh, i was there for four years and i was doing my mba at the same time in uh, in manchester university in, in the uk and somehow because you know i was exploring different other possibilities of myself i decided also to leave banking after four years and after assessing my career perspective and goals and uh, have my own uh, company. I decided to preach and teach all the values that I lived my life and really did transform my life with and for. Um, and as you rightly said, um, I recently authored uh, Time to Move On. And, and in the book, I help people to bust a lot of those career myths that you really need to bust them first before moving on in your life. Wow, interesting achievement, Mr. Mustafa. So what did you learn from the, your career shifter? Uh, it's, there are a lot of lessons learned. And um, like w w one, of, one of those myths I used to believe in, and, and uh, I used to think, you know, you, if, you, if you love your job, you can stay there forever. And uh, the idea of being in your dream career uh, for me looked like, it can, you know, live forever with me, but uh, it's it's really hard to keep a dream career, you know, all all your life around. So um, once I started busting that myth, I started, you know, thinking always of what's next. Um, so I would I would say I thought things are constant, uh, but actually it's ever changing. What are the criteria that? you can suggest to us that you need now to shift your career? Well, if, if you see yourself stuck um, in, in what you're doing, not really enjoying 100%, let's say if it's below 50% enjoyment, that's a red alert. Um, if, you, if you feel you're not productive enough, that's also a red alert. If you feel that you're turning to a very boring employee, who is just, you know, becoming a, a robot who wakes up in the morning, go to his or her job, you know, his her work, and then do the minimum of work, come back. And th that's actually a red, red alert. Um, also another sign, uh, burnout. If you see yourself burnout, um, you're not really enjoying what you're doing. It's a sign that you really need to think what's the next step. So, Mr. Mustafa, can you give us tips to become a great shifter in your career? For sure, for sure. The, the most important thing is what I call the passion blueprint. So let's, let's imagine both of us right now are, are driving, for example, from um, Canada 
all the way to, you know, across the West Coast to San Francisco. Let's imagine this. Um, so I would assume we need three essential elements along the journey. Number one, we need enough gas for our journey. Number two, we need a GPS with us. And number three, we need a final destination, right? Yes. If we, if we look at the gas, the amount of gas that we needed, that's really, really very important because if you don't have enough gas for the journey, we run out of gas somewhere in the middle and we'll stop. We don't know sometimes, you know, why we are stopping, but it's because of the gas. The GPS itself is what is directing us, you know, you know, what's the easiest way to reach our goal or reach our destination. Without GPS, we'll get lost hundreds of times, dozens of times in the middle. And there is no benefit of having a GPS unless you have a final address or a final destination that you can just write down, put down in, in your GPS. So let's apply this on our life, on our careers. Enough gas means enough passion. If you don't have enough passion for whatever you're doing in your career or your life, you run out of gas. You will stop somewhere in the middle. Maybe you don't know why, why this is happening. Maybe the symptoms, as we said earlier, you're not productive enough or you're burnt out or you're not enjoying what you're doing. But most of these you know, symptoms are actually manifestations of the lack of passion. The, if you don't have a GPS, that means you are not really satisfying your values. So your GPS is your values. If you don't know your values, or if you work in a place or in a career that doesn't satisfy your values, you will get lost in the middle. And I just give an example. If, if family or freedom is on the top of your values, and you're not really giving them much attention because of your career, then you are endangering what you're doing. The third is a final destination, and we say it. And a final destination in a career or life means an ideal lifestyle. So if you really don't know where are you heading in your life, if you don't have an ideal lifestyle you want to live, if you don't have an ideal place or city or, or you know, um, a, a town that you really want to live, an ideal house uh, you want to live in, it, it's really hard you know, to find out for yourself, where are you heading to? So you really need to figure out that. And I advise always my clients that I work with is to build that power of imagination that you should imagine their ideal lifestyle, um, you know, where do you want to work? Uh, what's the ideal uh, weekend? Uh, do we want to work for home? We want to work, uh, you know, somewhere else? Or you know, all of this, if we bring them together, what you really want to focus on is somewhere in the middle between your top passions, core values, and ideal lifestyle. What age did you realize that you're good in writing? Yes, that's also <laughs> that's also interesting because um, growing up, I wasn't really good at writing. Um, but then somehow, while I was doing my MBA, I started figuring out that I write more in an analytical way. And I also, my diplomacy career helped me a lot with that. Um, uh, in the diplomacy career, I, I learned how to write in a very analytical way, uh, whatever you're writing about. And I use that in my MBA, in my academic papers uh, all the time. And, and somehow I remember the feedback I got from my professors uh, is that you get to write a book. And uh, <laughs> I thought about that. <laughs> and... Um, I remember I was doing in, in halfway, you know, doing my MBA, I, I thought of writing 20 subjects that I didn't want to write a book about. And I wrote 20, 20 plus. And I look at them and I say, maybe one day I can write about you or, or part of you. Um, I waited for another year until I finished the MBA and I went back to the same notebook and I open again and I look and I say, OK, I think it's time to start now. And this is how the journey started. It's a very long journey of learning and evolving. <laughs> oh, wow. Interesting. So, Mr. Mustafa, who are your favorite authors that influence you the most? Oh, oh, there, there are a lot of them. But if I can mention, if I can mention um, let's say I start with Jack Canfield. Uh, so, Jack Canfield is... is um, New York Times bestselling author, somebody who sold 
almost 700 million copies of his books, uh, whether Chicken Soup for the Soul series or the Success Principles. Um, also, Jack Canfield is, is number one success coach in the US. Uh, and it's someone I learn from uh, closely. I started learning from uh, uh, online, how to write a book, how to market your book, how to think marketing from day one. And then uh, slowly, slowly, you know, destiny uh, get me close to him. So I, I did a lot of events uh, with him, either as a supporting coach. I also before that did uh, his certification as a success principles coach. And I'm using those success principles to uh, help people to find their dream career. Um, so simply learning from Jack, knowing that when, when Jack started writing books, uh, he really had to build his expertise, you know, his knowledge from scratch. And he's someone that uh, went all the way, you know, uh, he, he broke uh, all the records, if, if I would say. He has, uh, at, at some point, seven New York Times bestselling books on, on, on the list. So uh, he's a great person to learn from. Wow. Interesting. So if you describe the writing of your favorite author, what is it? Or what are they? Well, what I really like about uh, the way he writes, it's it's very simple, um, and also it's it's just based on stories. So the power of storytelling is is something uh, I learn a lot from him in that aspect, and at the same time, I'm still learning how to use that power uh, in in many different ways. When whether when you write your book, when you give your speech. Um, or, or whatever. So I think that's a skill that everybody needs to master, you know, whether you're an author or not, uh, how to tell a story. Uh, so it's really something I appreciate about Jack. Yes, it's something else. So do you think you uh, get that attributes in your writing? I, I try my best. So uh, what, for example, and <laughs> in, in, in time to move on, I started um, and the intro of the book with one of my signature stories. So I, I wrote about uh, my exam story in diplomacy. And um, somehow the feedback I got, whether from Jack Canfield himself or many other authors, is that uh, you, you intrigued us to continue and read the story to know what would happen. So it's, it's, it's really something I appreciate. I also want to wanna, wanna give uh, uh, also a good hand to... Uh, Jeffrey Berwin, because he's, he's my mentor in storytelling and he's one of the people who are always supporting me in writing, you know, and crafting my stories in the book and beyond that. Yes. What are your short-term and long-term goals in writing? In, in short-term goal, I'm working on a second book. So in time to move on, the first chapter, I speak about what I call the Supreme Specialist Myth. And I bust that by uh, sharing, uh, uh, if I would say, my perspective to the future of work, you know, being a career ship shifter, somebody who has in-depth experiences across different domains, is what would be the future norm of work. And I thought having a lot of feedback and a lot of positive feedback about that chapter, I want to expand that to a new, whole new book. So I'm writing a book right now. It's about the future of work and how to become a career ship shifter. So your job or your career wouldn't go obsolete if AI and technological advancement would, you know, endanger your career or your job. Well, good luck to your goals, Mr. <laughs> Mustafa. But before we go on, I want to shout out to the people listening in Vietnam. Thank you, Vietnam, for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created to empower writers all over the world. Ho Chi Minh, I got 54% audience share. Hanoi at 43% audience share. And Team Thai Bin at 4%. Thank you, Vietnam, again for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created to empower writers all over the world. Like Mr. Mustafa Amor. Time to move on. The seven career myths keeping you from finding your dream job and what to do about it. How did you craft it? Ah, uh, the, the that book story uh, is very interesting because 
I, I was writing another book in the beginning. So I was writing what I would call the passion project, which is the how, how to change your career or how to find your dream career. But in talking also to a lot of people um, and, and what they really need as a starting point, I figure out what that what they need is, okay, they still, a lot of people still believe in some myth as a kind of conviction. And they need it first to debunk those myths before moving on. Um, and I, I thought like some of those myths, like the Supreme Specialist, as I mentioned, another one, it's too late to change. So I'm also arguing it's never too late to change. Uh, another one is what if I invested a lot of time, money, and energy in one career, and now I'm going to go out and leave all of that and start it from scratch? So I'm proving to you that you're not starting from scratch. You're building again on what you have in another career or another area. Um, so somehow these are the seven myths that I learned the hard way in my career transitions, in my four or five career lives. And um, I'm, I'm really happy to share them because I learned them the hard way. I don't want people to waste years and years and years to unlearn them. And uh, I would just hopefully by reading, you know, uh, the book, they will be able to bust at least one or two of them. Very well said, Mr. Mustafa. So time to move on. What behind the title of your debut academic book? Well, it's, it's the idea of time to move on is I've been thinking a lot about the title, but in, in, in many situations, you know, we are stuck somewhere and, and really we don't know what to do. And, and it's a call. It, it's a call not to be stuck wherever you are, you know, and it's always, always time to move on when you feel you are in a living a boring life or you're not enjoying your career anymore. Um, or, you know, there is on the personal level, there's something that preventing you from achieving your dreams. There's always a time where you really have to sit back, step back and think and reflect on your life and plan to move on. Uh, because this is how you can achieve in your life. If you keep stuck in your life and I, I have seen some people are not able to escape, you know, that cage, it's, it's really hard. So, for me, that title is, is a call for everybody to change his or her life in many different ways. But do you have another title before? Uh, I had some working titles, but they never, they never reached to, to, to the level. But if I would say the other idea was the passion project. Uh, so I was, um, I was considering uh, an, another idea. It's, it's, I call it the passion project. So imagine your life or your career as a project. So I, I wanted to help people how to build their careers, their life on the right foundations. Yes. And according to Miss Victoria, this book is the answer to finally overcoming your fears and moving into a career truly want. So, Mr. Mustafa, can you give an example how to move on to your stuck career? The, the, the most important part, I think, is the orientation. So a lot of people before deciding where to move and, and, and which direction to take, they should really do a bit of orientation about themselves. So as we talked earlier about your passion, your values, you know, all of that, a bit of skill analytics, knowing where are your strengths, and then deciding where to go next, it's very, very, very crucial. So uh, I see orientation is a key. That's number one. Number two, Extend or expand your network. Always your network is your net worth, right? As they say. So um, the bigger the network, the more interconnected, the po more powerful the network, the more powerful you are. Um, I interviewed dozens of people and, and some of these you know, stories are coming in my next book uh, and the one after as well. And I've seen the power when we, people are able to expand their networks to many different directions how amazing how surprisingly they could get their dream career I, i've now one of them for example he got seven or eight careers all of them were introduced through his network and this is amazing you know oh wow interesting for your second and according mm -hmm. to me sarah what an inspiring read what a great life the author lives so 
what are the inspiring story that you want to share to us that make your readers glued to your book? Well, the inspiring stories is, you know, if if I would say, um, I grew up as a very shy, introverted kid. So I, I almost had nothing compared to other kids that I can, you know, I can be proud of as, as a kid. But I had my dreams. Um, I, I remember when I was six, seven years old, my parents, family members, you know, they were asking me in a gathering, what you want to be when you grow up? And I remember one of my answers was, a few things. So I say, I want to be uh, a doctor and uh, an engineer, a football player, uh, an astronaut. So I say, I think five or six things. Um, uh, so sad, uh, the way they replied to me, oh, no, you cannot be all of them. You have to stick to one. Um, it was a bit shocking. I, I had to conform as a shy kid. But somehow, I you know, kept kept close to my dreams. I kept dreaming about my life. I and I, I enjoyed that. You know, uh, dreaming with myself, um, and that really helped me a lot. You know, I I had to choose a specialization um, as a as a teenager, and a majority of us as teenagers is really not easy to decide uh, which career you want to stick all your life to. So I decided to maybe do pharmacy because I love chemistry. Somehow, when I graduated, I thought, okay, um, I think I, when I dig deeper inside my dreams, I found diplomacy. So, okay, this is this is maybe would be the the, the, the thing. Um, moving on and on and on, fighting for your dreams, believing in yourself, having faith in yourself, and not not really listening to other people, but you really need to filter the feedback, you know, because. When you have a big dream, the majority of people around you will tell you no. I remember when I, I was a pharmacist, I want to be a diplomat. The majority of people around me were telling me stuff like, oh, you're stupid, you're silly, you're wasting your time. You cannot do this. Um, and I imagine if I just listened to every person around me, I wouldn't be able to do it. Yes, indeed. And according to Mr. Gabriel Cesarino, it is never too late to change your career. Recommendation, shift into your well, career. Well, I think, yeah, the first, the first step, start disbelieving in a lot of those myths that we used, we grew up believing in. And I think that's a very important first step. So, for example, and, and myself, I had that. So I, even while I was changing my careers, I thought that I'm a loser and because that this is how the society were looking at me. Oh, wow, you are changing your career again. Wow, you are changing your career again. But not knowing that that is power, it's actually is disempowering. So disbelieving in that and knowing that changing your career is a power and knowing that having the perspective from different careers is actually magic is really important. Also knowing at any point in your life that it's never too late is really important. If if you are at your 50s or 60s, and I tell stories about people who are in their late 50s and late 60s, how they were able to change their life again and again and again. Um, so that's a first step. Once you start disbelieving in those men, one by one, then I think you start going full speed in your career. And once you start going full speed in your career, no one could stop you. Indeed, Mr. Mustafa, and according to Anna Lisa, very practical step by step guide to help you to find your dream career. So, Mr. Mustafa, what is a dream career to you? <laughs> this is a great question. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> this is a great question because it's it's also a subject I talk about in the last chapter, in the last myth. I'm in my dream career. Uh, there are almost nine to 10 criteria I put in, in the book. Um, and they go around, um, I'm enjoying everything I'm doing. Uh, my job is very satisfying. I have a great team. They're very supportive. My boss is great. He's always, you know, believing in me. He's empowering me. Um, I see the value and the impact on my society or on the surroundings or, you know, on the world. So if you look at all these criteria, um, 
if you manage to score, I would say seven and above uh, in eight out of 10 of them, I think you are in your dream career. Somehow this is practically could be. But also on the other side, this change because, okay, the environment could change. The maybe a, a, a shift in the industry would, you know, change the whole thing uh, in your company or maybe a new management style or maybe a new boss or a new team. So all this change. And when you know that the things are changing, you should adapt to that and know, okay, maybe it's not my dream career anymore. Okay, let me create my own new dream career again. And this is actually the power that you can be in several dream careers across your life and uh, enjoy each one of them. Wow. Interesting indeed, uh, Mr. Mustafa. And thank you, listeners, for uh, my new listen score of 25 and belong to 10% popular show globally thank you listen notes so mr mustafa time to move on if you want to go back and revise the book itself which part of the book you want to revise <laughs> I, I, love this. <laughs> I love this question actually all your questions very interesting and uh, like the idea of perfection is is uh, is you know, I think most of the writers want to really perfect what they are doing. Um, I went through several drafts, you know, and uh, I'm somebody who likes to perfect things. And um, I think I went beyond 25 drafts with, with my publisher. Um, somehow I decided that I really have to stop somewhere 90% because it, to get to 85 to 90%, it's not that hard. But to get from 90 to 100, it's the hardest thing ever. Uh, so I decided to stop somewhere around 90s and not to try to achieve the 99.9 because you always can, you know, progress in the next book. You always can, you know, do things better in the next book. Um, and I thought, okay, that's, that's good enough. Um, if I would say, I, I would maybe, maybe write... Uh, more external stories, if if I would say, just to also prove to people that there are dozens and hundreds of stories of people who are achieving this. And this is actually what I'm doing in my next book. I want to prove case that there are a lot of people who are able to do it in much worse situation than our listeners. So everyone can do it. So your second book will be a follow up to Time to Move On. Exactly. It's, a, it's an expansion because it's how I forecast the, the future of work. If we say AI, technological advancement is reshaping the whole industry. Uh, there are millions of jobs are expected to disappear or transform due to AI. Um, many careers would disappear. So what would you do if your career goes extinct or your job disappear? The answer is in the next book, being a career shape shifter, if I would say. And also the answer in the first chapter, but I'm, I'm just expanding on it. So let's talk about AI, Mr. Mustafa, because nowadays it's a controversial issue. So what do you think about AI? Um, well, if, if, if we look at our human history, of progress and technological advancement, you will see that we were moving from one era to the other. Let's say we started for thousands of years and with the agriculture, you know, civilization, and then we moved to the manufacturing one. And, you know, that part stayed for, you know, the last hundred, hundred plus years. And then we moved again to the dot com, if I would say, revolution. So, uh, you know, three decades ago, four, four decades ago, we moved to that. So right now, it's very, very normal to have a new in, whole revolution. And the new revolution is AI. So um, it's, it's normal. It's happening. A lot of people are scared. That's for sure. But as many people were able to transform their life thousand years ago or uh, 200, 300 years ago to the industrial world, and then 30, 40 years ago, people were able also to transform to the dot-com world. Now, also, you are able to transform yourself. And I see the best way to deal with AI is not to be 
as specialized in one tiny specialization because this is where AI can come and just delete you. The only way to, to, to be in control is to be a shapeshifter and a shapeshifter who somebody has different experiences in different domains. And then you can manage AI yourself. And I think this is very crucial because in the coming 10, 20 years, there are a lot of change are happening. And unless you proactively you know, prepare for that, it's really hard. So, Mr. Mustafa, do you think if AI and human together evolve each other, do you think it will produce a better outcome? Well, that also depends on a lot of things, because if, if we uh, read most of the books, and if not all, that speaks about AI, there is always, also the, the coaching programs, courses, there is always a chapter or a module that speak about the morality of this, you know, like, what if AI is in the wrong hand or is in the evil side or in the good side? So if, if you ask me, I think the answer from my side is you're, we need many good people to know about AI. This is, this is like the, somehow the, the, the right answer from my perspective. So many, many good people to understand AI, many good people to leverage the power of AI, many good people to use AI for whatever they're doing in the future. Very well said, Mr. Mustafa. But before we go on, I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, on our third season with Chef Alessandro, one of the best executive chefs in one of the best restaurants in downtown Toronto. And please do listen to our latest episode this coming Tuesday. Oh, cannelloni, people. Cannelloni, one of the trademarks of Italian cuisine. Plus one more. Our books are out. Not only one, but seven volumes, people. Uh, Food 101, Volume 1, Basics, until 7. It's all about our 100 episodes of our first season of Food 101. And... Thank you so much for our $1 million. If you're supporting my Food 101, can you please support my Book 101? Because, as I said, this podcast is created to empower writers all over the world. So, Mr. Mustafa, time to move on. What is the best highlight? <laughs> wow. Um... So there, there are a lot, a lot of things to maybe to, to finish with, with this, but people should ask themselves what's next all the time. So once you have an achievement in your life and you, you, you find yourself stopping somewhere or, or stuck somewhere, uh, celebrate your achievement, your quick wins, and ask yourself always what's next. Always being in that mood of asking yourself what's next is very helpful to help you always progress forward yes i think i myself mr Mustafa, i'm a career shifter i took computer science when i was young and then i realized wow. i i'm not a good in programming and then after that wow. i realized that i'm good in cooking so i took culinary <laughs> now <laughs> I'm, that's so cool i'm a great chef <laughs> so i have my own podcast and now i'm trying to be a broadcaster <laughs> paul it's time to move on <laughs> If you're stuck in a career that you don't like, come on, move on. And as Mr. Mustafa said, bring out dream career. Yes. So <laughs> if we talk about best highlight, what do you think? The flaws of time to move on. Um, well, again, on the highlights on, on time to move on, um, there are a lot of down moments. Uh, we will be tested in in, in that difficult, because that's not an easy lifestyle. But then again, it's 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 very interesting lifestyle. If you manage to go through a bit of difficulty here and there and achieve your dream, and then again, achieve again and again and again, that's not the easy lifestyle that people just, you know, you know, stick to one job all their lives and then that's it. Uh, but again, it's not boring. It's it's full of amazing things that you can discover about yourself. And I think the best thing that you can know about yourself is that you discover that you could do things that you thought you never did in the past or you could never do in the past. And, and 
in my journey, I discovered a lot of things about myself that I thought I, I would never be able to do or have. Uh, and I think that's the best thing that you can do and the best favor you can do to yourself. Definitely, indeed. So, Mr. Mustafa, time to move on. What else you can say about it? Uh, it's, it's, it's a call for everybody. Um, it's, it's, it's very practical. It's full of stories. It's full of data and research because also I'm talking to your heart and your mind. Uh, I want to convince you in all ways that uh, if you still believe that being a specialist in one tiny specialization is the best way to live your life, I'm trying to convince you, whether through stories of people who were able to find the power in another way of life, or also through research or through data or through many things. And we'll just give an example uh, from the animal kingdom, if I would say. So uh, uh, let's compare right now koala, for example. Koala lives in a very specialized environment. It eats the same type of food, uh, eucalyptus leaves. Uh, it lives in a specific type in, in terms of environment and weather conditions. Once any of those criteria or, you know, those conditions change, koala cannot sustain. And then what happened is koala goes extinct. It cannot eat any other type of food. It cannot live in any other weather condition. Let's compare that to raccoon, for example. Raccoon is different. Raccoon can eat anything and literally anything. Raccoon can live anywhere, any weather conditions from, you know, North America all the way to, you know, uh, very, very, very hot weather, uh, weather in Australia or desert can eat anything. So if I ask which one would have more chances to survive, I think the clear answer is the raccoon. So if we really also want to survive the changes that are coming in the future, AI, uh, technological advancement, you would rather be a raccoon than a koala. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> analogy, Mr. Mustafa. I love it. <laughs> Mr. Mustafa, are you indie or traditional publishing? Well, until now, I'm still in, in my own way of doing things. Uh, so I, I work, yes, with a publisher in the US, uh, but they self publish uh, my book. But it's still, it's everywhere. It's on Amazon, it's on Barnes and Nobles, and in indie bookstores all around the world. But then also looking at the traditional way of publishing, there are pros and cons. And one of them is uh, you would take very long time to publish a book. And actually, I want it to be a bit fast. It's, it's about time now speaking about those major issues. Um, I cannot wait for a couple of years before, for example, my next book you know, comes out. And that's why actually I'm choosing uh, to publish my next book in the same way I published Time to Move On. Uh, having said that, it's still also, uh, you know, traditionally, uh, it's still nice also to publish one or two books uh, along the way uh, in a traditional way. I have good connections with best-selling authors, as I mentioned, Jack Canfield, Janet Switzer, and they are very supportive. Uh, so somehow, somewhere down the road, uh, when time is coming, I would I would choose that path as well. Yes, time to move on. Can you please invite our listeners to buy your book? <laughs> Thank you so much. So, uh, Mr. Daniel's listeners, uh, wherever you are in Vietnam, all around the world, um, this would be an interesting read. Uh, it's it's all about stories of people who suffered to find their dream career but then when they went all the way until they achieved their dreams they were so proud of their life they were telling you know people around them how they were able to do so so i want you to take inspiration for all, the, all those stories to start busting one or two or three or four of the smith then find your dream career uh, there always, always, always is never too late to find your dream career. So start now, uh, bust one of those or two myth, myth, and then move on. Definitely, indeed. According to my analytics, Mr. Mustafa, I have 
144 countries listening to me. So please do wow. support mm -hmm. Mr. Mustafa Amar because if you support him, more more books to come. And I mm -hmm. I myself I have testified that if you don't love your career, it's time to move on, people. Because if you move on, you will be more productive and you will spread more of this talent. You know, share mm -hmm. your talents in the sense that you become more productive. Please do read Time to Move On because it will help you a lot in shifting another career. Okay, Mr. Mustafa, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Daniel. Really enjoyed all your questions and, and there are many of them are very interesting. So I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you. Bye. Bodycon people, see you soon.